But uh, we can welcome back into our studio Craig O'Shaughnessy, who's been analysing in great detail all the matches every single day. But let's take a look back at the final today between Novak and Roger. So uh, just talk us through the main points of what you discovered when you looked into the analysis. Yeah, so I'm looking for separation in the numbers. And the, it's almost identical to last year. Uh, the blueprint to beat Roger here for Novak is controlling second serves and controlling the baseline. And the numbers, once again, are almost identical. Uh, Djokovic, for the tournament so far, was winning 59% of his second serve points. That got better in the final and went up to 65%. Uh, in last year's final, he was averaging 60. It also rose to 65%. So it's absolutely identical. Two years in a row, Novak's getting better on his second serve. For, uh, for Roger, uh, this year he was averaging 66% it drops below 50 down to 49%. Mm. Last year he was at 62, it dropped to 44%. So Novak got better with second serve performance while Roger got a lot worse. Mm. The second area is baseline points. Uh, in 2015, uh, Roger was, uh, for the tournament was at 52%, points won from the baseline. That went down to 40%. Last year in the final, it was 40% as well. So identical numbers there. And Djokovic was at 48% last year, 48% this year. So in a lot of ways, I think we looked at what Roger was going to do. And I think we looked, uh, you know, I'm certainly guilty of this, looked a little bit too much at the Andy Murray match mm. for, for guidance and, and uh, how Roger was going to do when you really needed to look back at last year's match against Novak because the numbers are very, very similar. Yeah, it was a totally different match, wasn't it, from that semi-final yes. against Andy Murray. And perhaps not allowed to play that way against Novak today. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to take a look back at uh, some of the footage from that third set. Uh, everybody remembers that tie break. Everyone's been saying it's probably one of the most epic tie breaks we've seen in that second set, uh, which no Roger had just won. But then Novak got off to quite a fast start in the third set. Yes, he did. And just even the start of that point, one of the things I was greatly impressed from the final with Novak is the depth of the return. He really did a good job there. A couple of years ago when he beat Novak, excuse me, when he beat Rafa at the Australian Open, Rafa said it was the best anyone had ever returned against him. I think Roger may be saying uh, that from today. And then we had that little rain break. And a little bit more aggressive um, after that from Roger. And you can see how far he's pushed Roger behind the baseline. That was an absolutely superb backhand topspin lob from Roger Federer. But uh, again, he has pushed, hasn't he, Matt, uh, Roger behind the baseline quite a bit in that third set? Yeah, definitely. He, he played very aggressively the whole match, Novak, actually. I think that the only chance I think Roger had in this match was to win that first set. I think that was, now that we look back at it, that was, was very important because Federer came out and played well. Yes. Djokovic, uh, I mean, it was a good first set, but I felt like Federer deserved to win that, and that might have changed a few things, but I'm very impressed with, uh, with Djokovic. He plays so aggressively, especially the forehand side. Mm. He's able to spin it and get Federer out of the court. Uh, and he was really trading forehands back and forth with Federer a couple of times. And, and, and it looked like he had more, uh, more power in his forehand than Federer did today. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I was more impressed with the uh, Djokovic forehand. He's, he's got this depth on it, but he also has this little hook on it that it hits wide and it goes. And, it, and he really pulled Roger wide of the juice court today with that shot. Yeah, and even the short angle as well. He's got both, hasn't he? And sometimes we were you know, in awe of some of those returns of serve that he struck when he was pushed out wide. Mm. The kind of return of serve off that forehand side cross court was absolutely spectacular. Yeah, I mean, we know he returns well on the backhand side, but obviously Federer serves a lot to his forehand when they play. Uh, and uh, some of those returns were unbelievable. I mean, to be able to get it that deep and, and that hard, I mean, literally he's clearing the net by, by a couple of inches only and, uh, and over and over and over again. So it's not luck at all. It's just it's such a clear commitment, I think. When he returns, he just decides before, OK, if the ball comes to my forehand, I'm going to go hard cross court. And he's just 100% committed, and it's unbelievable. It certainly is. Well, let's take a look at the fourth set, because at this stage, Novak Djokovic is cruising through this final at two sets to one. Uh, almost two and a half hours on the clock, but very firmly in his control and not too far away from a ninth Grand Slam title. Some more cat and mouse tennis here, Craig. Exactly. I mean, Roger's doing everything he can to get back into this. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more net play. There, once again, there's the serve, and he's on the back foot as his first shot after the serve and hitting it as a backhand. Great job to get to the net. I mean, he, he had to force himself to do that, and I think a little bit more of that at the right time could have paid dividends today.
And there's Roger. Roger sort of changed the tactics up a little bit, didn't he, in that fourth set? It felt as if he was just, there was almost a sense of urgency about his tennis as he was trying to keep the points even shorter and coming in more and more and more. Yeah, and he, exactly right. And he gets passed down the line there, but, you know, you've got to do it 20 times. You know, you, you win 14, you win 15, you lose four or five. It's, um, it, 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 the more you do it, the better you're going to be at the net. And Roger didn't really commit to that on the bigger points as much as he as he probably could have. Yeah, I thought that he was a little um, tentative, I have to say, in his tactics. I mean, apart from that serve and volley uh, on set point uh, in the second set when he served and volley and came in, but uh, otherwise he was way more tentative than he was against Andy Murray. And obviously it helps. It helps when you uh, serve as well as he did against Andy Murray. But in the end, I mean, really, it was Novak Djokovic. He's just too yes. good today. Yes, he was. He, he was. really was. And uh, we were listening to Nick Lester's thoughts, who's uh, a commentator on the ATP Tour, and he was saying that one of the most impressive aspects was the serve, because it's mm. so under, uh, underrated, is it? Yes. Sort of, we don't talk about it too much, but it's much more effective than you would imagine out there. 13 aces today, but also the three points he gets off it. What, what is it about the serve that's so special? Well, I think that he's improved his motion over the years. It's very fluid. He hits up well. He goes into the court well. And I like to think of it as a serve plus one play. And a lot of guys like Federer will look for a forehand a lot more. Novak's very good with the backhand. He'll run around some, but certainly not all. But a lot of times when you see Novak hitting that first shot after the serve, he's on or inside the baseline because he's hit his spot on the serve. He's hit it well. And the commanding start to the point just flows from there. Mm. Thank you very much for that, Craig. Absolutely. Uh Fascinating as always, it's uh, been a joy hearing all the analysis. Okay.